Welcome to class. I'm not happy about it either. I'm going to be out tomorrow morning doing my run. I knew you guys would be out running and shopping and everything. But unfortunately, we won't be together. So let's do class. This is going to be a different class in that we're not going to go on Illuminate, Blackboard Illuminate. You're going to watch two videos and then do um, some questions. First of all, let's go to Blackboard. You guys should have already shared with me the outline of chapter 14 and 15. If you haven't, please do so. I do have my computer and I will be grading tomorrow during the day. You're going to watch this short video on the vetting process. I know a few of you have asked me where you're going to do the Supreme Court vetting web uh, quest. No, we're killing that. Uh, and you will not see it in Blackboard anymore, even though you can see it right there in front of you. Uh, you're going to watch this short video. You're going to take notes on it, and you're going to do a second video, which, I'm going to, which is also in Blackboard right here, called Due Process Video. And the first one, as soon as I'm done, I'll put it here. Uh, and the video is going to be called the Supreme Court Vetting Process Video. And then you're going to do the court cases to know, which you're all familiar with because you already had to do one. And it's more than just Supreme Court cases, also a Civil Rights Act of 64, 68. You're just going to give me the precedent, meaning the opinion. You need to give me two or three lines, all in your own words. When you've done that, I figure that's roughly a class period, then you're done. All of that has to be turned into me by Thursday. We'll start the class on Thursday by going over any questions you have on the two short videos. The second one's seven. This is probably going to be about five at most. And then we'll do a quiz on it where you'll be able to use your notes. Any questions, just email me and I will be happy to answer it. So, a little bit of notes. The vetting process. Vetting means to make sure someone is good enough. Uh, we have vetting for who's going to make the top seven in cross country. Vetting for the varsity cross country team. My daughter said she wants to go out for drama, so vetting to be in the play. Vetting is seeing what people have, knowing what you need, and making sure you have the right person. So in this case, we're talking vetting for all federal court judges. So a question I could ask in the quiz, or what are the three levels? Thank, 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 right. District, Circuit Court of Appeals, and Supreme. So all of these people who are going to be nominated by the president and approved by the Senate have to be up to muster. Well, there's nothing you have to do other than be nominated by the president and approved by the Senate. In fact, the longest serving chief justice of all time, John Marshall, never went to law school. Uh, all, you don't have to. Would we nominate anyone who had never gone to law school now? Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, if you look at the Supreme Court, I believe seven of the nine have gone to not only a good law school, they've gone to an Ivy League law school, uh, I think seven of the nine, it's Harvard or Yale. So what do we look for? What do presidents look for? But it's not necessary they follow. Uh, American Bar Association, there's 7A, American Bar Association. If you practice before the bar, that means you practice, you've passed a test, that means you can practice law. And the ABA is an organization of all lawyers who, who practice in courts. And they do ratings. They do most qualified, qualified, and less qualified. So again, the bottom less qualified, and middle one is qualified, the top one is most qualified. And they give these ratings to people. Eight of the nine Supreme Court Chief Justice, eight of the nine Supreme Court Justices have most qualified. The only one who has just, quote, qualified the middle ranking is Clarence Thomas. Uh, some, all presidents use it except for George W. Bush said that he never used it. He didn't care what they thought. Ideology. Ideology is really important. Right now we have a Democratic Senate. Hang on one second, guys. Of course, you have to remember, you don't. the president doesn't have to, as Bush didn't, have to listen to the ABA. Uh, ideology, I started to say that, is... Uh, the Senate today is obviously a capital D Democrat. The president is Democrat. So he's going to get his uh, people through pretty much regularly. But if it was, say, Republican, that doesn't mean that the president has to nominate Republicans by any means. But that would mean that he would have to nominate more conservative Democrats because liberal Democrats could not get through. And actually, 
if you look at now, Sotomayor uh, and Kagan are both liberal Democrats who got through because the Senate is Democrat and the President is Democrat. Political support uh, means what have these people done in the past uh, to uh, get noticed? And obviously one, they've gone, even the, the lower levels have gone to good uh, law uh, schools. They aren't all sitting judges. I mean, sometimes you, uh, we actually have President Taft went straight to the Supreme Court from being president. Uh, and or my cousin who's a, a Court of Appeals judge went from being a law professor straight to the second rung up. He skipped the federal district court. But he uh, knew his U.S. Senator Mitch McConnell, the minority leader in the U.S. Senate now, gave him campaign money and whatnot. So that helped him get the uh, work to get the nomination from, in his case, Bush. Uh, race uh, and gender, two things that can go together. We have uh, one Hispanic, Sotomayor. We have three women. Uh, we have one African-American, uh, but obviously for many, many years it was all white males. And Reagan is the, Ronald Reagan is the first one to nominate a woman. George H.W. Bush, sorry, not H.W. Bush, I'm going to blank. I want to say uh, Nixon maybe was the first one to um, uh, nominate an African-American. And H.W. Bush, for that matter, was the second one. And, and then obviously uh, it's become more diverse in recent years. But what you then have to do is there's a lot of lobbying. For example, if any senator, any of the two senators from a single state are against the person getting nominated, in this case for the Supreme Court, uh, that person doesn't it, have a chance. Uh, also, interest groups are going to lobby for or against generally not district courts and rarely circuit courts unless it's a DC circuit court, which is considered the on deck circle. And then the Supreme Court, there will be lobbying on TV ads and things like that, and that's going to be done uh, in swing states. Virginia would be a good state to do it because we, um, while we lean Democratic, uh, we um, could go either way sometimes. And so, one, here is an ad, for example, just watch for a second. There's a special feeling of awe people get when they visit the Supreme Court of the United States, the ultimate guardian of our rights as Americans. That's why we set the highest standards for our highest court justices, and that's why we're so concerned. This is Gregory Peck. Robert Bork wants to be a Supreme Court Justice, but the record shows that he has a strange idea of what justice is. He defended poll taxes and literacy tests, which kept men... Pretty hard stuff. Uh, Robert Bork has taken more, took more flack than Clarence Thomas in terms of getting appointed. He was nominated by Ronald Reagan. He's become actually an action verb that if you get nominated and you take so much flack in the Senate hearings, then you've been borked, B-O-R-K-E-D. He, uh, very conservative, very bright, and didn't get it. Uh, Clarence Thomas wasn't borked because he took a lot of flack in the Senate hearings, but he was approved. Senate hearings, you can see just a little bit here of John Roberts, the Supreme Court Chief Justice. Day two of the Roberts confirmation hearings, the questioning begins. Kwame Holman reports. Everything was different today. Judiciary Committee Chairman Arlen Specter moved the confirmation hearings from the historic Senate caucus room in the Russell office building to a modern, more spacious hearing room in the Hart building. And the senators' scripted opening statements that filled yesterday's session were replaced by pointed, case-specific questions. In fact, 30 seconds after he gaveled today's hearing into session, Chairman Specter went directly to the 1973 landmark abortion decision, Roe v. Wade, and whether it is considered settled law. And I begin uh, collaterally with the issue of stare decisis and the issue of precedence. And it's interesting that the chair of the committee, in that case, Arlen Specter, actually was talking about stare decisis, let the lower court decision stand. 
uh, uh, something that we've learned. So you then go through the hearings. You have hearings for district court in the Senate, a subcommittee, uh, sorry, the Committee of Judiciary Committee, and then you have uh, a, a, the full Senate will debate, although it's not a hearing, and then they approve you. And some judges never even get out of committee. Once you've been uh, approved by the Senate, then you have a job, as you can see in front of you, for life. You can be impeached, and you can be by the uh, House, and like a president, and then convicted. Impeached, of course, means to accuse. We've had two Supreme Court judges, although not, none in the last hundred years, who have been impeached and removed. Uh, Congress, if you look at D, decides how many justices there are, meaning uh, we haven't always had nine. I want to say we originally had seven. And Congress, and I know you can't see E, also decides how many court levels we need. So originally we just had a Supreme and the, they uh, set up the two lower courts, the Circuit Court of Appeals and the District Court. And I'm pretty sure that's all I, yeah, that's it for this lecture. So again, you're going to now have notes on this. You're going to then watch a uh, civil liberties lecture at seven minutes, and then you're going to do court cases to know. And you're done.